Hi guys, it's Mrs. Moss here, and we're going to continue our discussion of meteorology by talking about air masses. Now, air masses are actually just large bodies of air, and they're characterized by two features, their temperature and their moisture content. And whether or not they have moisture, or if they're warm or cold, will depend on the land or water that they form over. That's known as their source region. So it's the origin of where the air mass develops. Here's a picture of our Earth, and you see in different regions we may get different air masses. If it's up closer to the poles, we'll have a cold air mass. If it's towards the equator, we'll have a warm air mass. We're going to look a little more closely at that right now. So air mass characteristics we're going to look at first is moisture content. The moisture content will tell us if there's water vapor in the air. And if it forms over an ocean, well, you guessed it, it's going to be a wet or moist air mass. We call that maritime. And the air masses that form over the land are dry, and we call those continental. Now hopefully that should be easy for you to remember because continental is a land, is the land. So continent is the land, it's going to be dry, hopefully you get it. The second feature that we're going to talk about is temperature. Again, it depends on the source region. And if you think back to that picture I showed you, you see here that if it's closer to the poles, it'll be a colder air mass. So it, we call those the polars, the polar air mass. And if it's along the equator, it's going to be warm, so we call that tropical. So let's go back to that slide. Here we go, and you can take notes on this. Again, air masses formed near the poles are cold. Air masses formed near the equator or the tropics are warm, and they're called tropical. Now we use letters to represent each of these features. So if it's the moisture content, we talk about continental, dry, right, forms over the land, we use a lowercase c. If it's maritime, forming over the water, then we use a lowercase m. If it's warmer regions, we use a capital T for tropical. And if it's a polar cold air mass then we, that formed over the poles, we call that polar, like I said, and we use a capital P for that. So I'm going to show you what that looks like when we put them together. Here are the list of our air masses. So I'm going to go through them for you, but you see in white, these are the symbols for each of the air masses. And if you look at the reference table on page 13, where all of our weather variables are located, you'll notice that there is a very small box at the bottom, and it says air masses. So it shows you each of these symbols, OK? So we put the lowercase letter together with the capital letter, and you'll notice it's a little different from what you might imagine. The lowercase letter goes first. The capital letter goes second. So we have continental Arctic, which are extremely cold, dry air masses. Continental meaning dry, Arctic representing the cold. And it originates over northern Canada, up where the, near the poles. Then we have a continental polar, which is a, also a cold, dry air mass, just not as cold as the one in the, that forms over the Arctic. And this originates over central Canada. We have a continental tropical, which again, continental is dry, tropical is warm. So you put them together and you get a dry, warm air mass. And that's going to originate over Mexico or the southwest United States. And then we have maritime tropicals. Maritime means wet, warm, tropical, so we have a warm, moist air mass, and that's going to originate over the Gulf of Mexico. We also have a maritime polar, which is wet and cold, moist, uh, I'm sorry, cold and moist air mass, and that originates over the North Atlantic Ocean. So we're going to show you a picture in the next screen that these form air mass. All right, so let's see if you can name that air mass. We have 1 CP, 2 CT, 3 MP, 4 MT. Take a moment, write it down. Okay, let's go through it. CP is continental polar, and that's going to be a dry, cold air mass. CT, continental tropical, 
Continental meaning dry, tropical meaning warm, so it's a dry, warm air mass. Maritime polar, maritime meaning moist, polar meaning cold, so it's a cold, wet air mass. And maritime tropical, number four, maritime meaning wet, tropical meaning warm, so a warm, wet air mass. Now let's take a look at where they form, their source regions. So this map demonstrates how air masses can start over the land or over the water, and also whether if it's northern and closer to the pole, or if it's by the equator and uh, closer and a little more warm, right? So let's go through each one. Here we have the Arctic region, so that would be a continental Arctic forming over the land and being very cold. In, going across, we have continental polar, you notice here it's forming over Canada. And then continuing on, we have a maritime polar. You see that this forms in the North Atlantic Ocean. So it's maritime. It's going to bring all of the moisture into the air from the ocean. But it's going to be cold because of the location north of where it's forming. Now moving downward, we have, southward I should say, we have maritime tropical forming over the southern part of the Atlantic Ocean and over the Gulf of Mexico. This is really where we want you to um, focus on as a source region for maritime tropical because this is the one that affects our region more than others. Uh, and then we have continental tropical which forms over southern United States and Mexico, dry and warm air mass. And then we have another maritime tropical that can form over the um, Pacific Ocean and affect the western part of our country, so it'll be warm and wet. So we're going to stop there for now, and we're going to continue on our discussion of um, air masses and look at the fronts that are associated with air masses in our next video. Okay, so I hope you got all those notes down and I'll see you next time.